Welcome to Adobe Photoshop Elements 13 Interface. If this is your first time experiencing the program, welcome. If it's not, well, welcome back. There's always a feeling of mystery and apprehension when opening a new program for the first time because we don't quite know where everything is and what everything does. So in this video, you'll become acquainted with PSE and the most important functions you'll use as a digital scrapbooker. That way we can start taming some of that apprehension. A welcome screen greets us on first opening Photoshop elements with an invitation to take a quick overview and learn what's new inside the program. You can also use the program to organize, find, and view your photos too using the PSE organizer. We're not gonna play with these fancy offerings at this time. Instead, we'll jump straight into the photo editor where we can edit enhance and add effects to our photos. So let's click on photo editor here. If at some later point you want to enjoy all that the welcome screen offers, you can visit the top menu bar here and choose help. Click on the welcome screen and it will return. Photoshop Elements provides three different modes to create and edit your images. They are Quick Mode, Guided Mode, and Expert Mode. The Quick Mode contains simple tools for correcting a photo's color, lighting, and other common problems. The Guided Mode contains tools for basic photo edits and special effects. But for our purposes, we'll always work with the expert mode, which provides a more flexible and powerful photo editing resource. So click on expert mode and let's deepen our exploration. And we'll start from the top, the top menu bar that is. Like all programs, the menu bar performs tasks organized by topic. For example, the file menu contains commands related to file management, like creating a new elements file, or opening an already existing file and closing a file. The top menu also contains ways to edit and enhance your photos, work with layers, filters, and other helpful options. The central sizable area in the middle of the screen is the active image area, which I also call the workspace. The currently active image or file will appear right in this window and all tools and panels will work with this one visible active image. The active workspace is where all the magic happens while the menus, tools, and panels surrounding support that magic. The Tools panel is located on the left side of the screen and provides access to the many tools we can play as we scrapbook. The tools are separated by ways of icons, which easily help us identify the tools to use. For example, the most widely used tool is the Move tool here, and its icon features a small arrow with a crosshair. Likewise, the Paint Bucket tool looks like a paint bucket. Some tools aren't as obvious, like this thing here. That's the lasso tool, but never mind its purpose for now. Needless to say, the tools panel contains our tools. Thankfully, you don't have to remember what every single tool icon is because hovering your mouse over any icon will provide a tool tip, which tells you the actual name of the tool a very handy feature. Once a tooltip appears, next to the name of the tool, in parentheses, is a keyboard shortcut that you can use to access other tools without having to move your mouse. For example, the keyboard shortcut for the Move tool is the letter V. If the Clone Stamp tool is the current tool in use and you need the Move tool, just press the letter V on the keyboard and your tool will change to the Move tool or back to the clone stamp tool if you need to use it by pressing S. Some tools have small arrow icons in the top right corner of their boxes when you hover over them. 
They pop up when you're near the tools panel. The small arrow indicates that other hidden tools are nested within this tool when you click on it. That basically means that when you click on the desired tool, a new selection of related tools will be revealed in the tools option bar below. The tools option bar, which I commonly refer to as the context sensitive menu, is a group of options that changed based solely on the active tool selected. For example, activating the Move tool will change the Tool Options bar to functions you can toggle on or off and adjust specific to the Move tool. Switching the Active tool to, let's say, the Brush tool will again change the Tool Options to a new set of functions along with those hidden tools related specifically to the Brush tool the Impressionist Brush Tool, and the Color Replacement Tool. You'll get used to this song and dance between the Tools panel and the Tools Options bar the more you digital scrapbook. The other panel you'll use more often than anything else is the Layers panel, and it is located to the right of your workspace. Whenever you add something to your digital scrapbook layout, a layer will be automatically assigned. The Layers panel allows you to create new layers, like clicking on the Create New Layer icon in the top of the Layers panel. And here's a new layer. It also allows you to blend layers, add adjustment and fill layers, and other customizations to your scrapbook page. Basically, if your workspace is where all the magic happens, then the Tools panel is the key to opening that magic, and the Layers panel is the map for keeping track of it. Directly underneath the Tools Options bar and stretching under the Layers panel are additional one-click workspace options and panels. We won't explore each and every single panel, but ones to note include the Photo Bin, which gives you a bird's eye view of all the open photos, layouts, and embellishments that you're using in Photoshop Elements. The Tools Options bar, which we've discussed previously, as well as direct access to the Layers panel if it disappears while working with another panel. And another panel we'll use is the Effects panel, which provides us with special effects for working with our digital scrapbook layouts. Again, these are the most widely used options and panels, and Adobe gives us one-click access to them. However, all panels can be accessed immediately by visiting the top menu, clicking on Window, and choosing any of the panels you need at the time. One other panel I'll introduce you to in Lesson 4 is the History panel. Now that you've been properly introduced to the PSE interface, let's complete our day of prep by grabbing those class goodies. So meet me in the last lesson video.